Hello, today I'm going to show you how I drew this fox. Now I drew the fox on um, pastel matte paper uh, using a combination of pan pastels and Faber-Castell polychromo colouring pencils. So um, the reason that I used pastel matte paper is that it's got really high tooth count, um, which means that you can put multiple layers of different colours and different materials and different mediums onto the paper and it will still grip. In person, the pastel matte paper is a bit like sandpaper really, it's that really is that rough. Now um, I use pan pastels because they don't really produce much dust, which is something I don't really like. I don't like dust when I'm doing the drawings. And Faber-Castell polychromos because they have the hardest um, uh, leads. Now when I'm drawing the fox, the first thing I have to do is I have to find a um, reference photo. So the reference photo I found of this fox, I can't remember exactly the website I got it from, but it's a high resolution photo, which meant that I could actually um, really zoom in and get the detail of the direction of the fur. So I, first of all, I um, start with um, using the pan pastels to create a background to the fox. Now, what I'm really looking for is to create a background that is um, blurred and there's no real um, detail to it. So I don't want the person looking at the picture to have their attention drawn away from the subject of the picture and towards the background. So here I'm just applying a layer of chromium oxide green um, with a large sponge that comes with the pan pastels. So the sponges are produced by soft tools, that's with two F's, and they come in a variety of different sizes. So now I'm using um, a soft tool uh, which is like a knife, I think they call it, with a smaller sponge on the end. And I'm applying some more colours. I'm using titanium white, neutral grey and permanent green, just to try and, and blend in the colours together. Uh, I didn't use I didn't um, use a big sponge to actually go in close to the edge of the fox. I didn't want to um, sort of uh, cross the line into the actual fox outline itself. So I'm doing that with the actual soft tool knife itself. And I'm just going round, just trying to blend all the colours in. I don't want anything to distract, as I said, the person looking at the picture. But I kind of want to give a little bit of a hint of there being something behind the fox, as you would see in a real photograph. So now I'll also apply um, some, um, uh, I think it's turquoise here, maybe also a bit. So also um, apply some ultramarine blue a little bit, a little bit and a bit of um, dairy light yellow as well. Not much though. So now I'm just sort of blending in, trying to go over the edges of the outside of the picture, just to try and get a bit of um, extra color. So now I get my polychromos and I'm now going to draw um, the eyes. So I did the eyes next because they're the areas with a lot of detail and I don't want to, uh, I think they're so important, I don't want to mess up the drawing too early. So I'm using some tracing paper to lean on, so I don't want to smudge the pastels. And I'm using um, a black um, 199 um, polychromo colouring pencil to do um, outline. Com um, combining that with some walnut brown and um, a bit of um, burnt umber as well. I'm then also using um, a, um, a white 101 um, polychromo colouring pencil to add the shine in the eyes. I think it's really important to do the shine in the eyes and really look at the reflections you can see in the eyes because that's what makes the creature look alive. Um, you don't have a, a living creature of flat eyes with no reflection. So I'm now also doing the nose, which is also another area that's quite tricky to draw with pastels. So I'm just using the black again and going over it, trying to do all the black. And then I apply the white polychromo colouring pencil on the shine at the top to give it a bit of depth. Then I move on to the mouth, which I'm not really confident with drawing, um, but I did a sort of a rough outline. You can see with the outline of the actual fox, I did outlines of the ears and the change of colour of fur. So now I'm going back over um, my fox, and this time I'm applying um, Hansa yellow, and then a little bit of uh, uh, diary light yellow as well, and also a bit of um, orange. Just try and add a bit of variety in its colour. I do the um, the ear with a bit of black for the outline, and then inside I'm using a combination of Hansa yellow and white. At this stage, what I'm trying to do is just create a base colour to the fox. I'm not trying to do any sort of detail. All I want to do is just make the fox have a bit of colour to it and give it a bit of um, depth. 
I'm really just looking at the, the, the highlights and the shadows and the fox, trying to work out where the light is coming from um, and just trying to give it a bit of a rough um, base. At this stage, it's the stage where you kind of think this is not looking at all like a fox. You start to think, am I wasting my time or not? So this is a tricky bit, just this ear was really difficult for me. And I, it's a lot of detail on the actual original reference photo, so it took me a while to work out. And now I'm applying um, some titanium, titanium white. Um, I use a soft, tall knife, and then I start using the sponge in the big area. And this stage, I'm also trying to work out um, the shadow underneath the chin, because I don't want the chin to be lost, um, but I don't want to make it over the top. So I apply um, some neutral gray and a little bit of black, actually. And I'm constantly trying to work out how much color to actually put underneath the chin because um, I don't want the chin to get lost in the drawing. And really, when you're looking at a picture, you start to notice how many different types of color there are in pretty much any animal that you draw. The, the fur in an animal is not just one base color. It's a variety of colors that are really quite surprising. So here I'm taking a risk, and this is a stage where I'm thinking it's not a particularly good picture because I feel I'm using too much dark, um, sort of blacks and neutral grays on its uh, chest fur, but then I add even more and I think, oh gosh, I have ruined this completely now. But I think this stage doesn't really matter because it's not going to look particularly good at this stage at all, really. Um, so now I'm just adding a few more highlights, I'm trying to work out where the sun is coming from, and I need to try to add a bit of darkness around the eye sockets to give them a bit of depth because you don't want the fox to be just a flat surface. You want to add a bit of variety to try and get the eye socket in. So now I've finished all the pastels, so I start putting them away. Uh, I'm not great with pan pastels, which means I do produce quite a lot of dust, which is really annoying. Um, so I like to clear that away before I start using the colouring pencils. So I put everything away, and then I clean my table. And the last thing I want to do is lean on some pastel dust, and then lean onto my picture and end up ruining it in some way. Okay, now I'm just going to be doing the left ear, starting with some black, um, a black polychromo. Then I'm going back over with um, some raw umber, and then finally adding a bit of um, Naples yellow as well. So I'm trying to mix them in with a bit of white as well. And I've also used a bit of um, Pompeii, Pompeii and red as well. Um, just going over, it's surprising how many different colours there are in the fox's ears. Um, I'm also adding a white outline to the ears as well because when an animal or an object is lit from the back or has light coming from the back, it creates almost like a halo effect around the animal. Um, so it's something to watch out. So now I'm just going to over and I'm actually going to start drawing the directions of the fur on the animal's face. So the um, fur around um, the fox's face is much shorter, uh, particularly around its eyes and around its snout. Um, and it gets longer when it gets down to its body. I decided to stop at one point and I go back up to the right hand ear because this is a really tricky ear to draw. There's a lot going on in the reference photo and I'm really struggling to work out how to um, create it in colouring pencil because I'm still learning myself and I'm nowhere near um, skilled in this area. So I'm constantly going over, looking at the photograph, looking at the direction of the fur, looking at where the black fur appears and actually drawing where I see the black fur and not just drawing where I think the black fur would be, I draw what I actually see. Um, the white um, uh, colouring pencil really helps in this uh, area because it really does make the picture pop. Um, I'm getting to the stage now where I think like I've kind of um, finished the, the ear now. So I start to look at the fur um, around the edges of the ear and then the fur on its nose now. So this is a stage where I'm just, just going over um, with a few different whites because they do blunt quite quickly, quickly. And I'm just going to draw the direction of the fur on the fox's body. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this and it actually really helped me when I went back over it later on with um, different colours. So I'm just doing a really rough direction guide for the fur. Um, it's amazing how many different directions the fur flows. So now I'm just going to be using um, a burnt um, um, sienna. Um, 283 to draw some darker um, lines of fur and for some reason I dropped my pencil right on the picture which is a really silly thing to do um, I don't know why I did that okay then when I get back then I start to put some Naples yellow back on 
and really um, adding a bit more detail. I'm trying to blend the white and the orange parts of the fur in a bit around its um, muzzle. Um, I think it's, it's working out quite well actually. I was quite pleased with that. Um, I'm adding a bit more darkness around its eyes with um, a walnut brown as well. I try to use, avoid using the walnut brown too much. I don't want to put too much dark on its fur. Um, so I'm still just um, trying to add some texturing to all of its fur because nowhere on the body of this fox uh, is its fur completely white or completely orange. Um, and now I'm doing the dark areas under its mouth or around its chin and its jaw. Uh, it's surprising how much darkness there is actually around there. So now I'm just going over a little bit of black just around its eyes to make them stand out a bit more because I felt they were being lost uh, in the original pig, um, original um, version of the eyes. And now I'll go back over with the white. This is the point I really look forward to doing because adding white to the fur, particularly this fox, really made it come alive. The reference photo, had um, zooming in, it showed how much white fur um, there was in this fox. Um, and I'm just trying to avoid um, making the lines too long. So, um, as I said, um, the fur lines, the fur on the fox's face will be quite short. They get a little bit longer around the ears, um, but they still don't get very long. Um, and then, um, just trying to get all the different directions in and trying to layer the lines up and not make them look like they've just been randomly put on. Um, it's really quite interesting if you do have a reference photo to look at, just to look at all the different directions that the fur goes into. It's quite amazing. So now I'm just doing the um, lines around its mouth um, and trying to add even more detail into its um, snout and its nose adding the random um, hairs that stick out from any animal which give it a bit more realistic look and now I'm just going to try and add a bit more white to his chest now um, because there's a lot of darkness under there but you can see it's really beginning to come um, uh, come out now so the fur on its chest and around its and the back of its head is really quite long um, as are the um, the random for pieces that come sticking out random different directions you can see it's really quite lovely and sort of um, flowing underneath its neck or underneath its chin should i say um and i'm just adding um some more um naples yellow underneath on its body because there's quite a little bit of um light on the left hand side of its body i think that's where the sun is coming from and so it's light in the other parts of the, the fur you can see the fox his fur is now not just orange, it's a lot of different colours. I think I used about four or five different oranges and yellows and whites in the end and browns just to add a bit more sort of depth to it to make it more realistic. Look at your own hair in the um, look at your own hair in, the, in a mirror and you'll see that it's actually um, uh, a lot more um, sort of variety in colours than you probably imagine. So now I'm just doing a little bit of a different I'm just trying something different. I'm going over the orange and just having the fox's fur really go a bit crazy around its um, neck and its chest here. And I think that really made it a bit more realistic. Animals are not perfect creations. They're all going to be random fur lines and random hairs all over the place. And that's just what makes them real, really. So one of the things I was told um, early on when I started drawing is that when you think that you have um, finished a drawing, just go for another half an hour or another hour, just to add a little bit extra, um, because that's when you can do it. You can't, no, it's not easy to come back to the same picture in a few days or weeks' time and add more detail to it. Um, so now I'm just sort of going back over a few more times just to see what have I missed out. Now I'm drawing in the whiskers as well. This is quite tricky, is it? They're bold lines, I didn't want to mess that up. And I'm just sort of making the jaw a little bit darker as well. Um, I'm now just sort of almost putting smudged white along its right hand side. Um, just a bit, bit more colour from that side. And adding a bit more random fur around that there as well. Um, yeah, so this is the end result of the picture. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into my learning process as, a, as an artist. 
I'm not um, a super skilled artist. I'm still learning on the as I go along. Um, but I hope I've given you some ideas and tips perhaps, or some ideas into how I made this drawing. This is probably the animal I'm most proud of I've drawn so far, and I really wanted to share it with you a lot. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you can come back and watch some more of my videos in the future. Um, and thank you, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.